Hello and welcome to this short video on SOLIDWORKS PDM standard. My name is Ed Hawkins and for the next few minutes I'll be talking you through the following. I'll talk through the workgroup PDM retirement plan announced by SOLIDWORKS, we'll talk about what PDM standard is, what functionality you get and also take a look at the software in action. We'll then talk through the options for migrating your data from workgroup PDM to PDM standard and we'll finally finish off with some information on the additional functionality you can get with PDM Professional. The retirement of Workgroup PDM was announced by SOLIDWORKS with the release of the 2016 software. You may have seen some communication about this already, but we will discuss the timeline in a bit more detail here. You can see from the timeline shown, it is still available with 2016 and will be with 2017 too, but with the release of SOLIDWORKS 2018 it will no longer be available. This means that all PDM Workgroup users have a good amount of time to plan for this change, allowing the right amount of thought to be put into any migration projects. With the release of 2018, anyone wanting to use Workgroup PDM from this point forward will either need to stay on 2017 or stop using Workgroup and use PDM Standard with SOLIDWORKS 2018. So, what is PDM Standard and who is it for? Well firstly, it's a data management system intended for small, existing Workgroup PDM implementations or single site SOLIDWORKS customers not using PDM. It's also designed for anyone whose main need is to manage SOLIDWORKS and draft site files or any SOLIDWORKS user who wants to manage their data more effectively. So let's take a look at the software. I've got an assembly on screen here that I need to uh, modify a part on. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on it and attempt to change the dimension. And you can see that SOLIDWORKS is telling me I don't have ownership to this file because it's managed by PDM. So if we take a look at the interface on the right hand side, I can scroll down all the components contained within this assembly and see key information about them. So the file we're trying to change uh, is actually older than the Vault version. To get a little bit more information on this file, we can review the part card and we can see that somebody's had a comment uh, on there to say that they've changed it. So if we want to use this in our assembly, it's just a question of getting that latest version and SOLIDWORKS will replace that for us in our current assembly. So we can see that looks much better now. So now we've modified that file, I just need to save and check in our revised assembly into PDM standard. So as I do this, PDM standard actually queries any of the components contained within the assembly any new files, any associated drawings, and allows me to see which ones it's going to check in because it knows that a change has been made to them. So finally here, all I'll need to do is add a comment and then I can share my revised assembly with the rest of the design team. PDM Standard is a fantastic tool to manage your data and it's really easy to use. You'll see here it's built inside Windows Explorer. So I've got my project folder structure here with assemblies and components contained within it. I can browse through uh, information regarding the components on the data card and I can also preview uh, the assemblies and any part files within the integrated eDrawings preview towards the bottom. You'll see that we've got rotation tools within here as well to actually manipulate the files and take a look at them. We can also look at key information about who has the file checked out. If we take a look at some of the other tabs towards the bottom, you'll see on the Contains tab I can see any components that are contained within the selected assembly. On the Where Used tab I can see information about where that assembly is used. And we've also got a Bill of Materials tab as well, showing us a full Bill of Materials for the assembly that we've selected. So you'll see here we can see quantity information and also description and part number information about the file selected. If we take a look behind the scenes at the administration tool, we can look at a bit more information about how the system can be set up. So every file can be controlled by a specific workflow. You'll see here this one has a non-approval loop, but also the ability to move the document through pending approval to a release date. So these can be set up individually for any requirements a user have. You'll also see that groups are contained within the system and users and just here we can take a look at the structure of the part card uh, to see how these can be customised to add any information that's required onto them. Revisions can be added within the system, so there's a section for administering those just here. 
And if we go back to the Windows Explorer interface, the way we move files through the system is to right click on them and you'll see that we can change state here. So we have the choice for a no approval required or submit for approval transition, which directly mirror the workflow that we're using for this assembly. This new product is included with SolidWorks Professional and Premium. It uses the Windows Explorer interface as we've seen, but behind the scenes it uses a database structure running on SQL Server Express. There's a fast installation from the SolidWorks Installation Manager to include the archive and database servers as well as the SQL Server Express. There are also easy upgrade paths to the more functionally rich product PDM Professional with no migration required. So what are the benefits of PDM standard to existing PDM workgroup users? Well, firstly, there's a fairly low learning curve. We've seen that with the use of Windows Explorer as the interface. There's also a low cost of entry, with it being included within SolidWorks Professional and SolidWorks Premium. The design process can be streamlined and visually mapped using workflows, but also we get easy visual-based administration within the administration tool too. And if extra functionality should be required at a later date, PDM Standard can grow with your business and allow a painless upgrade path to PDM Professional. So what do we need to consider when migrating data from Workgroup PDM? Well firstly we can take a look at how many files need to be migrated. We'd also need to understand whether every revision of every file is required. Also whether every project folder needs to be pulled across as well. Has the revision scheme changed over the usage of PDM Workgroup? Is the data consistent? So does every file use the same custom properties? We can also take a look at whether any old data can be archived off. All of these things can have an impact on the time required for the migration and therefore the cost. So it's always worth getting in contact with us and having a discussion about what you need and how we can help with that migration. So we'll just finish off by summarising the differences between PDM Professional and PDM Standard. So PDM Professional, you can manage non-CAD data within the system, or alternatively CAD data from other systems like Inventor or Pro Engineer. You can also build multiple workflows. Behind the scenes it uses the larger SQL database. It can also be replicated for multi-site use. It has built-in viewers for non-CAD documents, so you can preview them where the eDrawings window is in PDM Standard. We can also set it up to generate files automatically, that's something that's referred to as tasks. So for example, if you wanted to generate PDF files of your drawings once they were approved, in PDM Professional this is something that can be done automatically. There's also a serial number generation built in and you can configure email notifications to notify people when certain actions happen. If you do require any more information about PDM Professional or PDM Standard, please get in contact with us.